Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we'll do our match reaction for both round of 16 games. Let's start with the Switzerland to Italy now. Is Switzerland the, one of the most under, disrespected teams in Europe? Because when people make their predictions, people always say, hey, Switzerland, they're not going to do much. Maybe round of 16 at best. Because, fun fact for you guys, the last six international tournaments, World Cup and Euros combined, only two European nations have consistently made the knockout stage. That being France, that we all know France have been amazing the last major uh, edition, so it's not too surprising. Then Switzerland. Switzerland is surprising. You have no Spain. You have no Germany. No England. And it just shows you how football, it just shows you how underrated Switzerland is and how much people need to respect Switzerland. And I always been one that been very, uh, I've always underestimated Switzerland. Every international tournament, I always expect them to do well. In fact, for this tournament, I actually predict them to go round to 16. I did not have them to advance past round to 16. And the fact that they, the, the fact that they made, the, the fact that they made the quarterfinals back to back Euros is crazy. And remember, the last, uh, the, remember, Switzerland coming into the Euros were pretty sketchy. They were very underwhelming, the qualifiers, you know, just about got scraped second place, you know, in a very weak group. A lot of people were writing Switzerland off, you know, and you have to give credit to Switzerland because what they did was amazing. And because they made an Italy team with this amount of heritage look very average. This was a very one-sided game, guys. 2-0 is a, is a, is a, it flatters Italy. Guys, this could have been. This could have been a three. This could have been four. Guys, look at the stats right here, guys. Just show you. Just look at this images right here, guys. Switzerland had 18 shots. Sorry, 16 shots. Four on target. Italy only conjured up 11 shots with one on target. And guys, look at the first half stats. I don't. If this is in dominance, I don't know what else is. Switzerland were so much better. Their midfield was cooking. Guys, Switzerland team is amazing. Look, look at the Swiss team, guys. They have Sommer. You have... Akanji, Akanji, one of the best center backs in the world, I would say. Then you have Jacques, who's been amazing. Then you got Abisher, who's been amazing for Bologna. You know, and Doy. Uh, you have Vargas and Bolo. Like this Switzerland team have a lot of quality. And don't forget the players they have off the bench. You could bring up the likes of Zuba. You could bring the likes of Dua. You have the likes of Alvedi, Shakiri, Okafor. Like you have so much quality on the bench. And for Italy, as I said, man. We have to have a convo about Italy because, oh my Jesus, Italy team is so average. It's so average. This is an Italy team that's a far cry. This Italy team is a disgrace compared to the likes of Italy in the past. The likes of Baggio, the likes of Maldini, the likes of uh, Cannavaro, they had likes of Nesta. I could name that Italian insane team. You go from that to likes of Scamacca, El Shawawi, you got uh, like Cristante, like you have so many bums in this team. Like, I'm sorry to say, this Italian team, they're mostly bums in this team. Italy it needs to really do a rebound, you know? And the thing is, a lot of people are going to blame Spalletti for this, and you can blame him if you want. But I feel like the bigger issue for Italy in particular is more so of how bad the players are rather than the coach itself. Obviously, Spalletti does deserve to get blamed because of how poor Italy were uh, day, on the day. But I think the bigger issue is just the players are mediocre. Like, I, I'll keep it a stack here, guys. And guys... The only reason why this wasn't a destruction was because Donnarumma. Donnarumma is an insane keeper, guys. He's been clutch for Italy this Euros. Guys, if Donnarumma wasn't this insane, I don't think Italy makes round of 16. Because he is the reason why it, it, that Spain game was close. He is the reason why that Croatia game was close. Like, he is the reason why. And remember, guys, Italy were on the verge of getting going out of the Euros. Because that goal that Sakengi scored against Croatia is the reason why they made the round of 16. Because had they not scored that goal, they would have been one of the third place teams. And given the other third place teams that advanced, they wouldn't have been one of the best third place teams. For Switzerland, man, great goal there from Froiler. And then a screamer in the second half for Vargas. And yeah, you just knew it was over. The only way Italy was going to win was going to be on pens. And yeah, I have to apologize to uh, Switzerland, man, because I d uh, wrote them off uh, uh, and really badly. And. The fact that they have performed so well in the Euros is commendable, guys. And we look at the knock outside the bracket, guys. You look at the path that Switzerland is on. They could easily make a, they could they could easily make a final, a semifinals. Because I look at the side of the bracket they're on. They don't have to. They, they could play against England or Slovakia, guys. They, they they should be confident for that match. And then at the semifinals, they'll either play against either one of Austria, Turkey, Romania, and Netherlands, guys. There is a great opportunity there for Switzerland, guys. Dare could I say that Switzerland can make the final? Now, can they win the Euros? Uh, probably not. I think that's a bridge too far because, like, 
Like when you see the, how the bracket is laid out, you have like all the top teams here and all like the pretty much the underdogs here on this side of the bracket. So for Switzerland, man, if they can make a finals, that'll be amazing because Switzerland have never got past the quarterfinals. Quarterfinals is the best they've ever done. Switzerland, the last Euros, went out to Spain. So can Switzerland do one better and make the semis? Time will only tell. But yeah, the Switzerland team, fantastic achievement for them. Fully deserved. And as for Italy, man, they have going to have to work on a lot of things, especially that attack. That attack for Italy is so garbage. They have to improve that attack because I'm sorry. I don't want to see El Shawawi, Cristante in the next international. I don't want to see these guys in the World Cup. And Italy, you have to make the World Cup, by the way, because I... We cannot have a situation where Italy misses out on three World Cups in a row. That would be too embarrassing. We cannot have that. Anyways, let's move to the other game, guys. Let's move to the other game we got here. It is Germany 2, Denmark nil. Guys, Germany look great. Germany look great. But as good as Germany were on the day, I do have some concerns. But let's start with the positives because I always like to be a positive merchant. Uh, Germany start off great. You know, they had the goal disallowed early in the game. But you could tell Germany was starting to create a lot of momentum, cre create a lot of chances. And they were going to growing into the game, growing into the They were going, it's doing so well, starting so well. Kasper Schmeichel having to make some big saves on the likes of Havertz. I think Sané had an effort there. But then once the game got once the game once the game got interrupted, we had a weather delay. You saw that Denmark, those they created some good chances after the restart. And Rasmus Hoyland, man, those two chances, especially that chance right before halftime. Where uh, I think it was like a Rudiger made a mistake there at the back, and Neuer had to come out, rush out his line to make that save. Guys, that is a that is a huge moment in the game, because if Denmark had scored right before halftime, guys, we could have had a completely different second half. Guys, the second half would have been so different. And Denmark, then they take the lead in the second half out of nowhere. I'm like, what the heck is going on, Germany? What the heck is going on? But to Germany's uh, rescue, VAR intervened, and it showed that. Um, I think it was, uh, who's the score of the score? Delaney? No, sorry, Joachim Anderson was, literally his toenail was offside. Toenail. It was so egregious. Then, to make matters worse, they concede a penalty for a handball. And I believe it's Joachim Anderson that got the, uh, that, um, that uh, gave away the penalty there, I believe. And Kai Everett sc scores. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, man. Uh, the Germany switched on. Uh, they made a big change. You have to give credit to Nagelsmann. He made a, a brilliant change, bringing on Emery Chan, bringing on Full Crook. And that's where you could see the game started to change because when Havertz was actually shifting to a cam and Full Crook came on, that's when you started to tell that Germany were looking very good. And you have to give credit to Nagelsmann because I think that was a brave change. Taking out your captain at the 64th minute was a huge, huge moment because it's your captain, guys. Gundogan's been one of Germany's best players. And to make that kind of decision is fantastic. And then the second goal, great assist from Rashad back. Great assist there to Musiala. Musiala scores to make it 2-0. And Germany, man, it, it just never seemed... Uh, it, just, it just seemed like once Denmark can see the penalty, the game was over. You just knew that Denmark weren't going to be able to uh, con control their emotions. And it just it's just too much of them, you know. Denmark did have some late efforts to end. You know, they tried to get some consolation goal, but it wasn't to be. And Germany holds on for 2-0 win. They couldn't even score through there in the end, uh, but it was offside. And yeah, Germany just looked amazing. Just looked fantastic. And for but for Germany as a set, though, remember I said there were some negatives of this performance? Germany's defense looks very sketchy. It looks very sketchy. Because as good as Schoderberg was, I thought defensively he was great. He has a Bozo moment in him. He has a brick gene in him. And the same kind of goes for Budigar. As good as these two are at center backs, and I think they had a fantastic game, defense, sometimes there's an error, there might be an error gene in him. And I worry for Germany because they'll be playing against, they'll, put, they'll most likely play against Spain. We'll obviously see Spain play, I mean, we would expect Spain to beat Georgia. But, you know, that could be an interesting game for Germany because Germany coming into that game, they're going to have to be a lot better defensively because Spain are looking amazing. Spain are looking amazing. And for Germany, as I said, man, defensively a bit sketchy at times and that's why i worry for germany is that they have to make sure they limit their defensive mistakes as for denmark they gave it their all they gave it their all they pushed they pushed they 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 did about the best they could but i just think for denmark this team just isn't the same this isn't the same team that made the semifinals in the last euros you could tell this denmark team is lo looking a lot more uh, lethargic a lot more older players and they just don't have the same vibes as they did in the last euro so i think for germany as i said man a great win for them but my goodness me, they have to improve that finishing because Havertz, man, he missed a huge chance. I think it was the 60th minute. He should have scored that chance. He should have scored that chance. Like when you're 1v1, you cannot be missing that chance. So 
what is Nagelsmann going to do now? Because if you want to play Havertz, I think he's going to try Havertz at a camp. But if you put Havertz at camp, you're going to have to bench Gundogan. Can you really bench Gundogan? Or maybe what you could do is this. You could put Cruz and Gundogan as a midfield duo, as a double pivot, and maybe put Havertz at camp as a striker full crook. You know, that actually could cook. That could cook. But Andrich, as Andrich is like that destroyer, though. He makes a lot of fouls. You need Andrich in the game. So it's a big dilemma for Nagelsmann. Do you bench Andrich or do you bench Gundogan? Because if you want to play Havertz, you should. But I don't think Havertz works as a striker. So if you want to play Havertz, you got to play him at camp. That's where the only that's the only position I see Havertz working at. I don't think he's going to work as a center mid. And for Germany, as I said, man, Tal got suspended for the game due to yellow card accumulation. And obviously, Rasm- uh, uh, Hoyland, I think, is a Denmark player. He also got suspended due to yellow card. And obviously, Calafori. So, yeah, I mean, for uh, for Germany, as I said, man, they look great. But they just have to make sure they got that midfield combination right. Because, how, like I said, you have to start Fulkrug. You have to start Fulkrug. Fulkrug is just that guy that brings you goals. So you can't have a situation where your striker doesn't score goals. So for Germany, as I said, man, they have to figure that out. So how, what are you going to do? I think Germany should do that, in my opinion. I think if you're going to play Havertz, you got to play Mekam and put Gundogan as as a double pivot. And you got to, I guess, got to bench Andrich. I guess got to bench Andrich. So let me know what you guys think, man. Let me know my German fans. And let me know what you guys think, guys, in the comments below. Do you guys agree with my analysis? Do you guys agree with me? So please remember to like and subscribe, guys. Um, and yeah, as I said, guys, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.